Okay, um, good afternoon. Um, I'm uh, really nervous, so I don't know how this is going to go. But uh, at any rate, my name is Paul Greenbeck. It's written up on the board here for you. Um, I've been with Synergis now for actually about four and a half years. I wrote down five years, but then I counted on my fingers last night. And it's four and a half. Um, prior to joining Synergis, I uh, worked as an adept administrator for 10 years, and I was um, a CAD administrator since, uh, I'm not going to give you the date, but some people don't believe CAD was invented when I started. Um, so basically what I'm going to be doing today is I'm just going to be going through a presentation of some uh, common errors that we see at Help Desk from time to time. I'm going to be talking about the sorts of things that cause them, how to prevent them, how to resolve them. Not everything that I say today is going to resolve all of these problems in every single case, but I'm providing the most... Um, uh, the normal uh, resolutions for the issues. So moving uh, ahead, I'm going to just go to uh, the first uh, message I wanted to talk about, which is I'm sure a lot of people have seen this one. It's the ADAPT server has no task manager running. Uh, this is going to be seen by all of your users when logging into ADAPT. And you'll often see it after an ADAPT server has been restarted. So if you've just restarted the server or rebooted the system or things went down in a power outage or something and you bring it up and now everybody's seeing this. Now, the most likely cause of the error is that the ADEPT service came up online before SQL was running or available. Now, I've done a bad thing throughout my entire presentation. When I say SQL, I mean database. So if you have Oracle, that applies to you too, but I'm probably going to continue to say SQL because that's what's in my notes here, so that's all I can do. So at any rate, uh, so ADEPT is up and running before SQL comes up and running, and now everybody's getting this error. Um, the first thing that we're going to need to do to resolve the error is to stop the ADEPT service. Once we've stopped the ADEPT service, we want to verify that... Um, we want to verify that uh, SQL is up and running, that the service and server are available to adapt. And once we've done that, we want to go ahead and we probably want to start the Synergist Adept server application from the icon that's on the desktop on the Adept server. By default, some people have removed it, but it will be in your start menu. And that's going to start up uh, this task here. Once that's up and running, you can... Uh, verify that you can log into an ADEPT client. If you can, you just need to log out of your ADEPT client, exit the server here, and then start the uh, ADEPT service. And now everyone should be able to log in. Now, one thing you might want to do before you start the ADEPT service is take a look at uh, the startup type for the service. And if it's not already set that way, you might want to check it, uh, change that startup type to automatic delayed start. And this will give the SQL service time to come up and start running before the ADEPT service will uh, start. And that very often makes this error message uh, just go away. So it's not going to be showing up every time you restart um, the ADEPT server. Now, after you've changed this or verified that it is set to delayed start, just start the ADEPT service and verify that your users can log in. Now, for this issue and for all others that I'm going to talk about, if this information doesn't help and this doesn't get you out of the woods, uh, call the help desk and we'll take a look and try to figure out what's going on. Okay, this next error is less common. Um, it's got a lot of junk in the error message, but the most important part of it is down at the very bottom line. It says, the connection's current state is closed. Uh, this indicates that ADEPT is not actually talking to the SQL server. Now, this can happen because uh, a network connection dropped and ADEPT did not reconnect to SQL after the network uh, drop was restored. 
And there's also something that we don't have to worry about so much anymore, but um, there is a connection pull maximum size setting in ADAPT, and if we exceed the maximum number of connections, then that could also result in this error. Okay, next slide, there we go. Um, so now in ADEPT 2018, uh, we've implemented by default uh, connections on demand. And this means that we don't have to worry about connection pool sizes because the database connections are created as they're required. It also means in the case of a network disruption, if SQL and ADEPT don't, aren't able to talk to each other, once that network uh, connection is restored, um, the connection will be demanded and it will be made uh, because it's set to uh, create these connections on demand. So hopefully going forward, we're going to see a lot fewer of these errors than we've seen in the past. Um, now for um, ADEPT 2017 and previous versions, it's now recommended that we manually configure that same setting. So if you find the adeptserver.ini file, it's going to be on your adept server um, down in the server folder. Uh, under the adept server section of the file, you're going to want to add the, uh, it's recommended that you add the command on demand equal y and save the file. You will need to stop and restart the service after you've done that for the change to take effect, but then on demand will be active. You might want to check uh, first in that file for a command that says, um, I think it says check connections equal Y. That's the older recommendation. We're no longer using that one. If you do see that line, uh, simply remove it and replace it with on demand equal Y. Uh, are you asking why do they see it or why is it cryptic? Honestly, I'm very sorry. I cannot answer that question. I will attempt to find an answer for you. Um, I, I do not know why the error message looks the way that it does. Yes, I, I, I understand. I, I will look into that for you. At any rate, however um, obscure the message may be, and I agree with you, um, basically what you want to do if you do receive this error, you want to... Um, you want to verify that SQL or Oracle or whatever, it, that it's up and running, that the server is, service is running, that the two servers can talk to each other if they're on uh, different machines. Once you're sure that SQL is up and running and everything's fine there, you would stop and restart the ADAPT service. Okay, now this error message could be due to a lot of things, and I do not know all of the causes of this off the top of my head, but one thing that I do know about this error is it would seem to suggest that there is something wrong with the ADEPT web server. And the thing is, before you start to try to troubleshoot a web implementation that might have been working perfectly fine up until now, there's another possibility that you should investigate first. I found this one by accident, actually, while trying to create a different error. And again, this would be a communication problem between the web server software and the SQL server. I created this error by deliberately turning off SQL, the SQL service, while I was running ADEPT. I was doing that because I was trying to create a different error, and this one popped up. I think this only shows up in ADEPT 2018. I have not seen it in 2017, uh, but basically, once again, the uh, resolution would be to verify that SQL or your database, that the service is running, that the server is available, and then stop and restart the ADEPT service. You are going to get tired of hearing me say stop and restart the ADEPT service. I apologize. 
This is an interesting one. Um, this is a could not locate group. This is another error that's seen when users are trying to log in and will most likely affect all users. So far as I know, this issue always traces to corrupted temporary files on the server, on the ADEPT server. Once again, stopping and restarting the ADEPT service usually resolves the issue. The big question is, well, how did my server temporary files become corrupted? So there's a number of different reasons that it could be, but what I've seen for the most part is starting up the Synergist application, the ADEPT server application, while the ADEPT service is running. Uh, basically, what's going on here is the ADEPT server application is uh, typically used for troubleshooting and should never be run in conjunction, in conjunction with the ADEPT service. Now, it should be noticed that entries in red in the server application do not necessarily indicate a problem, but if you're looking at red something like this, that certainly suggests that something's wrong here. And in this case, what's going on really is the ADEPT server application and the ADEPT service are both trying to write to the same temporary files in the same location at the same time, and that's how they got corrupted. So to resolve the problem, you would exit the server application, you need to stop the ADEPT service, and then you can start one or the other, but not both, and then verify that all of your users can log in. Um, the process, basically, when you've stopped everything and restart one of them, it's gonna refresh all those temporary files and should resolve the issue. Okay, I had to ask somebody what this meant. Usually all I see is L code error. Um, it stands for invalid, invalid query locator. I didn't know that until like two days ago. Um, but basically this error is usually the result, and as far as I know, always the result of saving, data, saving changes to the database from ADEPT designer while the ADEPT service is running and users are logged in. So basically, I created this specific error message by going into um, uh, ADEPT Designer. I opened the database while ADEPT was running. Uh, I added a field called C, mu uh, C underscore music, which you can see is referenced in the top line of the error. And um, then I saved the changes to the database, exited uh, Designer, and then I started getting this message. Now, this issue can usually be resolved by stopping and restarting the ADEPT service, but not always. So the first thing you wanna do, of course, is stop and restart the ADEPT service. That'll probably fix it for you. Um, it may be necessary to stop the ADEPT service, then open the database up again with the ADEPT designer, save the database, and then restart the ADEPT service. Now, on rare occasions, even that might not resolve the problem. Um, now, if the changes were not extensive, it may be possible to back them out and start over, but in a worst case scenario, you might need to restore the database from backup and start over from scratch. So it probably goes without saying that you should always back up your database prior to making any changes uh, in designer, however small, and you must always stop the ADEPT service before making and saving changes using ADEPT Designer. So, and I'm looking out and I see developers right in front of me and I'm thinking, oh my God, I hope I got all that correct. So, because they'll catch me if I didn't. Okay, the last issue here, this is not a server error for a change. Uh, this is simply a configuration error and um, basically, a required plugin failed to load. This will keep people from logging in. Usually one or more users are unable to log in because in this case, the Inventor plugin has failed to load. Now, Inventor needs to be installed on user workstation before the plugin 
can load. So I would assume that in this case, Inventor is not installed on the workstation. And the problem is that the plugin has been set to be required. So that being the case, Adept will prevent anyone from logging in on any workstation where Inventor is not installed. So it's probably not a good practice to make Inventor or other CAD applications required. Um, most companies have adept users that don't use CAD. Uh, many times the adept administrator doesn't use CAD. And so CAD programs are not installed on their computer. And if this is set to required, then um, they aren't able to log into adept. So the user is locked out to the, due to the missing requirement. Basically, an admin um, can get past this by holding down the shift key while he's logging into a depth. He continues to hold the shift key until he, until he gets to a prompt that says, um, skip all plugins. At that point, he can let go of the shift key and select yes. That will now allow the user to log fully into Adept, but none of the plugins are active. So any plugins that you're using, none of them will be loaded. So at this point, we need to fix the problem. It has to be an Adept administrator who does this, but uh, basically from the system, you're going to open the administer plugins. You're then going to locate the uh, plugin that's causing you the problem, whatever was referenced in the required um, message. In this case, again, it's Inventor. So you would select uh, the Inventor plugin, and you would select the Edit button. And now what you want to do is you want to uncheck this box down here that says Required. Once you've done that, you simply log out of Adept and you should be able to log back in without any further errors. So at that point, anyone who does not have the Inventor software logged in, in this example, they would now be able to log in with, without the problem. If it's set to required and they don't have Inventor, then they get that message, and um, the only thing you can do is cancel out of the login. So just remember, you probably don't want to make CAD programs or other programs that not all Adept users would have installed on their computers, you wouldn't want to make plugins available for um, those programs. Or you, I mean, you wouldn't want to make those uh, plugins required. So that's really all I had. So unless anybody had a question, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Dean. Yep. Uh, will the slide be from somewhere that we can reference them? I believe this presentation will be up on the website. Martha is nodding yes. So uh, at some point, the presentation will appear on the website, and you'll be able to Watch me again. <laughs> you will. <laughs> yes, sir. I think Jean had a comment on the designer piece. You're going to. Uh, I thought I'd just uh, add that your problems with designer were because you were adding or modifying or creating a field in the database. In 2018, we gave everyone permission to open designer. Thank you. So um, uh, once again, they're uh, able, they're allowed to change library cards and file guide views while the ADEPT service is running. But unlike me, do not attempt to add or delete fields. Is that fair? Excellent. There are error message or there are error numbers that are associated with some error messages. Um, I believe most 
I don't know if we have, I don't actually know, I'll have to look into it. I don't know if we actually have um, uh, like a list of all the error numbers and what they mean. Um, I can look into that. Hello, Paul. So when we want to stop and start the adept service and the adept file uh, service as well, is there a specific order that we must do it in? Um, not really. Um, there, there's not. Um, you can, if you're stopping both, you can do them in either order. I ordinarily um, would, you know, I mean, it's personal preference, really. It doesn't matter. Uh, I would stop the ADEPT service first so that nobody's trying to access the AFS service or whatever. But it, it really doesn't make any difference. The, uh, theoretically, you'd probably uh, let your users know that you're shutting down the system and lock the system before shutting them down. So it doesn't make any difference what order you shut those down. It does make a difference if you're going to be shutting down your SQL service. Um, that should be shut down after the ADEPT service and should be started up before the ADEPT service. All right, thank you. Yeah. Um, on the designer, currently, if I need to say add a field or a few, you know, a couple fields, because I and I try to save those, so I'm not just doing it every week. I kind of save till it's necessary. Mm -hmm. I'm able to. My users are in there having, you know doing their thing, I'm able to open and save as a right. copy to my desktop or you sh and then do what I need to do before I shut everybody out and then bring that copy up. Right. Are you, will you still be able to do that in 2018? Uh, yes. Um, yes, you will be. Yeah, that's, I, I didn't mention that, but yes, you can save a design file and make your changes in the design file. The thing that you can't do in ADEPT 2017 at all, or shouldn't do, and in ADEPT 2018, you still won't be able to do it with, uh, by changing, when you're changing fields. But the only thing you can't do is you can't save to the live database while it's running. But yes, you can still do, you can still make that design change file, uh, designer file. I, DAT, I can't remember what it's called right now because I'm very nervous. <laughs> We good? All right. So um, I think uh, Dean's up next. Oh, I need the clicker. Um, there is no clicker. Okay, you want a question? I'll just do it from here. That's okay. Hello, everybody. So one of the common questions that I've seen numerous times since being here is the the question is how do I access files from a previous employee. Uh, previous, the employee is no longer either with the company or they're out of the office for some time, and they have files that are checked out and nobody else can get to them. Um, these are actual questions that were actually emailed into the, to the help desk. And what do you do next, and who do you call? And they told me to say, don't call the Ghostbusters. Give the Synergist help desk a call. All right, the first thing what you want to do is you want to figure out how many files are impacted. How many files does this ex-employee have out in his work area? The easiest thing to do is, according to this, is to pull up a search file, search by owner. Search on out status by and sort by owner. Find the owner. Uh, on the document tab, once you locate the files that are sorted out, we have actually a command in adept that you can actually release ownership. Uh, release checked out files. I'm sorry, release checked out files. Um, now, any changes that were made while the file was checked out will not be saved. You, but you will be able to get to the files and check them back in, and you, whoever needs to work on the files will be able to work on them next. Uh, who can do this? Uh, only administrators have the ability to release checkout for all users. Uh, users can only release their own that are checked out files, and if they did release it, it would create duplicates in their work area. 
Thank you very much. I don't know if anybody has any questions regarding this one topic. <laughs> I'm out of here. Thank you. So my name is Elaine. We're going to talk about that doesn't really describe it. adept libraries, where to find them. Eh, not exactly, but close. Um, let's see, how do I get this thing going? Here we go. So, again, my name's Elaine Wildarsik. Um, I've been in the manufacturing industry over 30 years. Um, started with ADEP back in 1998 when it was called NFM. I don't know if any of you, any of you, NFM? Worked on NFM? Not you, Gene. You don't count, Eric. You don't count. No customers? Okay, so I'm, I'm alone here with the NFM. Come on, where, where, where? Okay. Underneath the bright light. Under, no, it's like the bright light's in my face. So I worked on it from NFM 1998. Um, I enjoy, I love concerts. I love live music events of any kind. Um, and I've just recently decided I'm just going to live life. So money, whether I have it or don't have it, doesn't matter. If there's something I want to do, I'm going to do it. And then I also, the reason I put the last, the last statement in, I have this knack. When people make statements, I always associate it with songs. I don't know why, but songs pop into my head. So I like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. Just for those of you who might know the song. <laughs> so, on to what we're going to talk about. Huh? So, did you ever get that user that comes up to you and they're like, I don't know what happened, or they call you on the phone, I don't know what happened. I can't find my libraries. I need to get these files, and I'm not seeing the library that the file is supposed to be in. Also, my screen, all of a sudden, is this funny tint to it. Don't know why it happened. I didn't do anything. They swear. It wasn't me. Somebody did something. Adept's broken. I don't know where they went. <laughs> Too bad. Yes, it could be. So they're looking for the library, and it might look like this. They're like, you know, I usually have more than two libraries. And you notice this funny yellowish, off-white, I don't know how you're seeing it. Sometimes it depends on the angle that you're looking at the screen, it changes colors. I don't know if any of you have noticed that, but it does. So, if you come down, this mouse is terrible. At the bottom of your screen, where's this pointer thingy? There we go. Um, laser pointer. Right down here, active library set. I don't know if everybody can read it, but that's what it says. You click down there, and you'll get this, this dialog box. Change active library set. And the user will say, I, I, don't, I never saw this box. I, I didn't do anything. I don't know what happened. But somehow they did. So they're going to either click here. Or, sorry, you're going to come here. And let me get the next slide. Did it? OK, I got it. So you're going to click the little arrow, and then you'll see. I can't even see up there. Oh, there we go. All visible libraries recently used. If you select all visible, click the OK. Now they'll see all their libraries. The color, the funny color goes away. And there's the files they need. They will swear to you they don't know how this happened. It just happened. My feeling is a lot of users tend to click and slide. You know, they're, they're in such a rush. They're clicking here. They're clicking there. They're going like this. And they're clicking and sliding at the same time. And they accidentally click down there and click it. And it switches. My theory, you can test it out. Don't know because they swear, I don't even know about active library sets. So how could I have done that? So when you're users, it's just a helpful hint. Instead of calling Help Desk right away, although we love hearing from you, this would be what you'd do first. OK. 
So anybody ever feel like this? Like, oh my gosh, look at, I'm just buried. I just have so many darn files. I, 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 can't, I can't work like this. But I have to because I have an inventor assembly that has thousands of parts. And they're all sitting in my work area. And then maybe you have Word documents or Excel files that are being used by your assembly. So there's a little tip here. Work area filters. I love these buggers. Don't know if anybody's used them. I use them. Right now, where's my pointer again? We are set to view all. And so all my files are there. I've got docs, I have drawings, I might have Excel, I don't know what, PDFs, everything. Okay, it changed here, but it didn't change here. If you click the little arrow up here, you'll get this to expand. You have view only selected, exclude selected. Two options, I use them both. You kind of use them in opposite ways. So if you're gonna say view only selected, you're going to end up, once you pick it, next to it you'll get this white box, and you're gonna pick file extensions that you only wanna view. View only selected, and then the extensions. Make sure you put the, uh, let's see, it's a semicolon between, between them. So you're gonna put dot doc, semicolon dot jpeg. Put in whatever ones you only wanna see. You click apply. Now that's all you're seeing. Now you've cleaned up. Look at before, we couldn't even fit them on the screen. Now you've got some files. Now you're seeing, and you can work with them a little easier. The other. I don't think that option's available right now. Good feature request. Start using them, then you can start bugging us that you want a feature request where, and maybe sharing. You can make this a favorites list? There you go. Now I learned something. Yeah. <laughs> Cancel that. No, you can't. <laughs> so the other option is the exclude selected. And again, I usually go with the opposite. So we were saying you only wanted to view docs and JPEGs. So now I might say I want to not see, and we're going to select. Again, you get the box and the same thing. So we're gonna say, forget those JPEGs, forget those docs, forget the PDFs, forget the tips, forget the Excel, everything. You just put them in there and now you're left with just your drawings because that's what you need to work on, right? You, right now I'm just working on my drawing, I'm working on my assembly. So you might have your IAMs, your IPTs, your IDWs and stuff and that's what you're gonna see. And it's a little more manageable for those of you that might have thousands of files. I don't know how much this is gonna help, but it will at least give you a little clearer view of what's in your area. Yes. Yes, beware of that when you come and all of a sudden you're like, and you forgot that you had set your view only or the other thing though, you have to watch when you set that, if a depth crashes on you, you're not guaranteed that that setting's gonna be back when you come back in. So what I used to do with a lot of settings within a depth, I always made sure, I, if I changed settings that I wanted to keep, I always made sure I closed a depth because sometimes I never knew when it was gonna crash. And if it crashed, I come back in and all that work of those settings was gone. So, what? Exactly. what? Who was that, was that Gene? You're not in the real yeah. world, Gene. <laughs> Before you move on, can you do like a number and an asterisk to search for any file that begins with a certain number? 
Or is it only I extensions? I believe it's just you're, you're removing the extensions out of the area. I've never tried it with the... Typically it's used for like, uh, when you're opening up a DWG to create those lock files, a lot of people don't want to see those lock files, so they just put that extension in. So if you're just looking at one job... Or BAKs, or BAK. great thing to get rid of those BAKs that you know you don't want to be messing uh, with. Well, is that what the BAKs? Yeah, the BAKs, the temp files, or whatever else is in there that you don't want. But I also used it on working files. Sometimes I knew that I had those Word docs or Excels, but hey, right now I'm working on drawings, so I use the filters to, to streamline my uh, work area. So if, if the filter persists, when you next time open a DEP, does it only resolve the items that match the filter in the work area? Good question. You think so? So, so it, it's so, a way to limit, to have more files potentially in your work area, and when you log in, it only resolves the ones that are visible. Which will make it open quicker. Did we get a definite answer on that? <laughs> We've stumped the panel. Thanks for the help. Did we have another one over here? Down over here? And you're excluded. Oh. Hey. Hello. In your exclude example, what kind of character did you use to separate the multiple file extension values? It was did always you use the a semicolon? semicolon and a space or no space? No space. Just the semicolon dot whatever the extension is. Good one. Who else? Mike. My question is for Dean. Is he still around or did he leave? Dean? <laughs> so, Dean took off. Uh, oh, there we go. Well, maybe anybody can answer this. Um, so for file releases, um, if I remove the user from a depth, does that release the files? I still have to release themselves. Does it lock if I delete the guy person and does it lock it by mistake or should I re release it and then... How would you search? How would you search if the user has been deleted and it's been locked out? So uh, I can uh, help. We would recommend that you don't delete the user, but you disable him. And uh, when he's disabled, then his he's you can still search for that guy if you deleted him you would no longer be able to search. Um, and there is another poll, uh, I'm not sure when we added it, but I think it was in 2017. There's a, a whole administrative way to uh, administer all disables uh, users' work areas at the same time uh, that is very helpful when you have people that have left as long as you disable them and don't delete them. Also, very quickly, we, we talked about a scenario where the work area wasn't accessible. Um, but if the work area is accessible as an administrator, you can check those things. Right. One more quick interjection here. Um, Bill, Tony, and Gene, if you guys could stand up. We've got at least three of our core development team here. I just want you guys to know if you're out networking today, tomorrow, um, Gene as well. I don't know if Paul's here or any of the other guys from the development team. Paul was here. May have had he to. Just left this afternoon. He just left this afternoon. Okay. But I wanted you guys to know just some of the folks that are here. So um, 
way back when Bill, Bill Stamps, our chief architect for the ADEPT software, he's the original creator of ADEPT. So he's the reason we're all here today in the red shirt. Um, and Tony quickly joined him. Uh, and then Gene joined as well. So, and then Paul Legowski, who was also here today. So back to you. Any other, any other questions? I just wanted to make a quick, uh, on Dean's thing. As administrator, as soon as I found out a user was gone for whatever reason, that was one of the first searches I ran. Because the longer you wait, the worse it's going to get. The, the chance of the files actually maybe being gone because IT went and deleted them or took over the account. So I would try and get that done as soon as you know that they're either going, you know, they're gone, like today's their last day, get in there, run the search. And, and then if they're still there, you have that option. You say, hey, you have 20 files signed out. Get them signed in before you leave. So it gives you that option. Yeah, you want to try, if you can, I mean, there's always the instance where somebody, whatever reason, you know, you didn't even know that they got laid off or something. But if you know somebody's leaving, you want to get those files in, get the user to get those files in and, and get them through whatever workflow um, rather than waiting. So All right, that would just be my tip. We've got one more on to go. One. And yep, Brad's up next. Thank you. Thank you. Since Elaine just mentioned about Adept crashing, I'll just take a couple minutes and tell you two of the things that I've encountered so far with Adept. My name is Brad Cooker. I've been, let me move the screen ahead here so we can see what's going on. My name is Brad Cooker. I've been with Synergist since May of this year, but I do have 30 years of IT experience and in, in, in IT administration. Um, I have two teenage children, one boy, one girl. I'm an avid collector and restorer of antique pinball machines. And I have never yet encountered a, a dessert that I did not enjoy. A couple of things I'd like to talk to you about today. The first thing, Adept appears to freeze up. Uh, primarily, I see this where we have a system that has dual screens, and for some reason, the two screens are currently not available. You wind up going in, whether it's checking in a file or whatever you're doing, it opens a dialog box. That dialog box appears on the second monitor, which is not available. Since it's on the second screen and it's not available, you can't do anything with it. And let me get the right spot here and advance the slide. What actually winds up happening, you have an active dialog box that's off screen. Since it's off screen, you can't fill in the dialog box, you can't move the dialog box, Adept appears to freeze up. Since it's off screen, what do you do with it? The easiest thing to do, on your keyboard, you can select the active window. The key sequence to do that is to hold down Alt, hit the space bar, and then hit the letter M. That tells that active window to move. You can then use the arrow keys on the keyboard to simply move that active window over to the active monitor. You can then complete everything that's requested in the dialog box or the active window, close that active, uh, the dialog box, and continue on the way. Next thing I'd like to talk to you about Come on, there we go. You're in Adept, and some of the buttons on the top of the toolbar appear grayed out. You can't click on them, you can't use them. What causes that issue? Primarily what occurs, as you can see in the top uh, section up there, there are the check-in, the check-out, boxes are grayed out. Down below, everything is back. How you get to that point is by holding down the Shift key. If you hold down the Shift key, those buttons are no longer grayed out. They are not functional, but what you can do is then take the mouse, click on the button, and it will tell you why it's grayed out. As you can see here, we have two dialog boxes. The first one was when you went to view a document. The document view is disabled because the command, um, basically there are no documents linked to this or these records. So you can't view a document that has no link to a record. The second one, the approve was disabled because one or more of the following reasons, no records exist that you have rights to approve. So by holding down the shift key, clicking on that button, it will tell you what it's for. 
that concludes my presentation. <laughs> I like to keep it short and sweet so everybody can get out of here. All right. So, thank you.